we have a rather unusual laptop with us here today. This is made by Joy, one of the few Malaysian laptop makers out there. And making it all the more interesting, this is also their first ARM-powered laptop yet, with the Qualcomm Snapdragon chipset under the hood. I'm Winston Chan from Porter.net and let's get into the details of this laptop. This is the JoyBook SK3000 with a full aluminium build. Yes, it does come with a chassis that's more premium than many laptops in the market today. The lid only spots a single Joy logo and that's it. It's clean and simple, just how we like it. Lifting the lid, we can see the 12.5 inch FHD IPS display. It sports really thin bezels which bodes well for portability. With these narrow bezels, I think some of you might be worried of damaging the display when you drop the laptop, but worry not. The aluminium lid curves smoothly over the edges to protect it in the event of an accident. I do like this as it's not only functional, it adds a certain air of polish to the entire machine. The keyboard is what you would expect from a regular ultra portable. There's no numpad, but the Joybook SK3000 does have full-sized keys with the exception of the F keys and the arrow keys. The function keys work as you would expect from a regular laptop with the option to use the F keys by holding the FN key. Above the keyboard is a slick looking grille that houses the stereo speakers. The power button is situated just beside the speaker grill, putting it out of the way so that you won't accidentally tap the power button when working on the Joybook SK3000. You can also see the little 2 megapixel webcam picking out from the lower bezel of the display. This is a rather bizarre location to have a webcam, but more on that later. Flipping the Joybook SK3000 over, we see no perforations of any sort, as the Qualcomm Snapdragon chipset doesn't really produce much heat at all. There's a single cover that allows users to install a microSD for storage expansion as well as a SIM card tray for the LTE connection. You also get 4 rubber feet in all corners to raise the laptop off the desk for slightly better ergonomics. There isn't much to see here, so let's get down to the specifications. The Joybook SK3000 packs the Qualcomm Snapdragon 850 chipset, which is pretty similar to the Snapdragon 845 found in 2018 flagships, but with the Cryo 385 core clocked at up to 2.96GHz. This is an octa-core ARM64 CPU, which is different from the x86 CPUs you usually find in laptops. The CPU is paired with 4GB of RAM for basic computing usage, and Joy also baked in 128GB of UFS 2.1 storage. The GPU here is the Qualcomm Adreno 630 with support for Vulkan 1.1, OpenGL ES 3.2, OpenCL 2.0, and even DirectX 12. For connectivity, you get Wi-Fi 802.11ac or Wi-Fi 5 with 2x2 MIMO and Bluetooth 5.0. As mentioned earlier, there's support for SIM cards and this allows for the 4G LTE connectivity that makes the Joybook SK3000 an always connected PC. The display we mentioned earlier is a 12.5 inch FHD IPS display that puts out the standard 1920x1080p resolution. You get a single USB Type-C port on the side along with the audio jack which is pretty limiting but I guess it is sufficient for basic users. The Joybook SK3000 supports Qualcomm's fast charging standard to use up the 4200mAh battery here faster. As mentioned earlier, the entire Joybook SK3000 is clad in aluminium alloy, making for a very sturdy package that weighs just 1.05kg. Now, let's get into the benchmarks. Storage speeds are pretty good with up to 957MB per second sequential read and 190MB per second sequential write speeds. Random speeds aren't great, but that's a limitation of the UFS 2.1 storage standard. Overall, there's little to complain about in terms of the storage, and there's a decent amount of it too here in the Joybook SK3000. Moving on, let's check out the CPU performance. In Cinebench R23, the Joybook SK3000 manages 225 points in single core and 860 points in the multi core section. Not exactly groundbreaking stuff, but hey, it's already interesting enough that we managed to run a Windows 10 benchmark on an ARM processor. Speaking of which, our usual go to graphics benchmark. Superposition failed to run entirely. 3 Mark failed too, but it was slightly more successful in the way that we managed to run it but it didn't complete the benchmark and just got stuck. Still, we didn't manage to get a score out of it. Meanwhile in PC Mark 10, we didn't manage to get the usual full suite to run, but the PC Mark 10 applications test managed to run quite well with scores that reflect good performance in those productivity apps tested. Battery life is pretty good, with over 6.5 hours away from the plug. That's longer than I would like to work in a day, so that's perfect for me. Now, let's move on to the user experience. The Joybook SK3000 sports a pretty standard 12.5 inch FHD panel, but thanks to its size, the pixel density is actually very good. Text and images are very sharp, but the display could probably do with a bit more brightness. 
It is bright enough to be comfortable to use at maximum brightness, but it will definitely get washed out if you try to use it outdoors. It being an IPS panel also helps with viewing angles, as the colors don't shift when you view the display from different angles. Colors remain consistent even when looking at it from the side. And now it is probably a good time to address the webcam on the lower bezel of the display as well. The position is just perfect to get a good look at our video guy's double chin, which I do believe isn't ideal. Unless you somehow think that your chin is the most flattering aspect of your face, but yeah, aside from that, the maximum resolution of 1200p is plenty sufficient for Zoom calls and online meetings. Since we're on the topic of work, let's talk about the Microsoft Office Suite experience. Well, all I can say is that it's pretty great as you would expect after the PC Mark scores. It functions just as you would expect Microsoft Office to and it runs smoothly. If you're looking for a laptop to work centered around the Office Suite, this laptop has got you covered. But 128GB might be insufficient for those who churn out a lot of documents on a daily basis. So we also tried upgrading the Joybook SK3000 with a 512GB Kingston Canvas Go Plus microSD card. The installation is easy enough, just undo one screw, open the cover, lift the clip and insert your card. Benchmarking the microSD card here shows that it runs at about half the speed it is capable of, indicating a rather rudimentary card reader here, but it will suffice for basic storage usage. Another way you can expand the storage is by making full use of the LTE connection of the Joybook SK3000 to stay always connected to the cloud. You don't have to worry about looking for Wi-Fi when you need to access your files, which is a pretty good convenience feature. There's no need for troublesome configurations either, as all you need to do is put in your SIM card, restart the laptop to see the connection in your settings menu, just like your usual Wi-Fi connection. Speaking of which, let's see how fast is the internet connection on this thing. Connected to my 30 Mbps Cellcom Home Fiber plan, we get around 10 Mbps down and 3.43 Mbps up. Given that there are a number of other devices connected to the same router, in addition to the distance from the router, I would say that this is a fair result. Switching over to the data plan, we can see that we are seeing much faster speeds of up to 54 Mbps. While this looks great, the cherry on top is that the difference will be even more apparent if you plan on using it in a cafe, as you won't need to share the bandwidth with anyone else. This is not only better for speed, but also for privacy if you're concerned about that. The Snapdragon X20 LTE modem should support most of the local telcos here, essentially giving you the ability to pop in a SIM and enjoy 4G connection as long as you have coverage. Pretty cool, right? Now, let's move on to the keyboard. The typing experience here is actually pretty good. The extrusion point is right at the bottom of the key travel, but that's a common thing for membrane-based keyboards. The keycaps sport a coarse texture, which was good for a bit more sensation on your fingertips. The large trackpad here is a double-edged sword, as I found myself accidentally swiping around. It seems like the palm rejection is actually quite poor here. It has the same finishing as the rest of the laptop, which is nice and smooth to swipe on. As the Joybook SK3000 sports an ARM-based chipset, I think most of us would probably be interested to know how it actually performs as a laptop. Well, there are stuff that works and stuff that don't. We can't get the Adobe Suite to run, but GIMP was fine, so you can get some editing done on the machine. As mentioned earlier, the Microsoft Office Suite works great as well, so you can easily get some work done on the Joybook SK3000 with its good keyboard and always connected capability thanks to the LTE connection. The built-in webcam also makes things great for those who now have to work or attend classes from home. Let's talk gaming next. This is probably the most challenging task that one can possibly try to force onto the Joybook SK3000. Well, Dota 2 doesn't start. Faster than light, which has really low requirements, failed to start as well. We tried getting a game from the Microsoft Store like World of Tanks, but that didn't work out either. We thought we would have better luck with Asphalt 9 considering that it is, after all, a mobile game. It did run, but we were experiencing a slideshow. And finally, we also tried to run Left 4 Dead 2. It's an old game, but we still play it once in a while, so why not? Surprisingly, it ran better and we actually got around 15 to 20 FPS. Not the smoothest experience, but at least we can safely say that we managed to game on an ARM-based Windows 10 machine. RM2199 for a laptop that comes with baked-in internet connectivity without having to whip out my smartphone just to use it at a hotspot sounds actually pretty sweet. The Joybook SK3000 also manages to last 6 hours in my use, which is plenty for me to get my work done. It is also really light at just 1.05kg, perfect for me to carry around on my daily errands. And unlike other ARM-based machines which will more probably than not run Android, it offers a full Windows experience on the go which I do still prefer for work, despite the many improvements seen over with Android-based systems. Of course, I do wish that the screen is brighter so that I can use it in brighter environments, 
and the limited app support can also be quite irksome if this is your only machine. But I do expect Microsoft to improve in the expect. Qualcomm also has a few significantly more powerful chips in the arsenal already, so we shouldn't be limited in terms of horsepower either. The sole port being a USB-C port is not great as well given how USB-A is still the main connector for most of our peripherals, but I guess that's fine given how small and light this machine is. So would I recommend the Joybook SK3000? I must say that as a work machine, it would have served its purpose well. If you're looking for a laptop that can cover your work purposes well, with decent battery life without breaking the bank, this might just be it. What do you think of ARM-based Windows 10 machines? Do you think there's a future for it? Well, let us know in the comment section. That's it for our review of the Joybook SK3000. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please hit the thumbs up button and the subscribe button if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram and like our Facebook page. I am Winston Chan from Porter.net and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye!